Hello everyone and welcome to Instant Biology by Dr. Nilab. The topic that we would be dealing with uh, is Bioprocess Engineering Part 1 and this lecture would be in English. Actually what I am doing is I am starting this lecture series in English because I have been uh, uh, I have been receiving requests from many students who want that at least this Bioprocess Engineering lecture series should be bilingual. I have already made the lecture series in Hindi but I am also now making the lecture series in English so as to uh, uh, for the betterment of the students who are not able to understand Hindi. I request you all who have already seen these videos in Hindi as well. I would request them to watch these videos as well because it will have more information than you have already studied. It would have more references. It would have more questions. It would be more inclined towards the gate examination so all in all you would benefit from these lecture series okay so before starting this uh, this lecture i would like to announce that the introduction to bioinformatics course that we already launched uh, way back three months back uh, it's doing good and uh, we have launched the june batch of uh, uh, that introduction to bioinformatics course if you are willing to join that course you can message me on telegram itself or you can log on to my website and there you would find the introduction to bioinformatics course and then you can fill in the short form and i'll get in touch with you okay so now without wasting much time we can move on to the introduction uh, to, to the course bioprocess engineering first lecture of this lecture series so let us start with what is bioprocess engineering so bioprocess engineering is a specialization of chemical engineering so you might be knowing that chemical engineering is a branch of engineering and that particular branch has a specialization that is bioprocess and this bioprocess what do we do in bioprocess engineering we design and develop equipments and processes we design and develop equipments and processes that can be used in the food industry in the pharma industry and in designing of polymers okay so there are variety of definitions that you would get for bioprocess engineering in different books if you go through doran you would get a different definition if you study schuler and kargi you would get a different definition but let us understand this that when we are using the principles of chemical energy the principles of chemical engineering in the bioprocess in the biology world what we what we would uh, what we would get is that this amalgamation would be called as bioprocess engineering so you might be knowing that biological processes or biological reactions are really complicated okay they are very complex but an important thing is that even though they are complicated but they follow the physical laws okay that is why the laws of chemical engineering can be utilized in the bioprocess world and with the, with the help of those laws what do we get is we design and develop processes and equipments and which can be utilized in different industries right another definition that comes to my mind is when we are utilizing different types of cells it can be plant cell it can be animal cell it can be microbial cell and also the uh, the components that are present inside these cells let us say an enzyme that is present inside a microbial cell for production of important things that can be utilized by us then it is called as bioprocess engineering so you can produce a lot of stuff you can produce antibiotics you can produce pharma products you can produce food products so all this can be produced in the bioprocess engineering sector okay now let us come to the next step that is application so whenever you think of bioprocess engineering what comes to your mind actually whenever i think of bioprocess engineering a big fermenter comes to my mind okay so the first thing or the first application that we can think of when we talk about bioprocess engineering is fermentation studies so the companies that are uh, that are involved in fermentation doing fermentation and producing fermentation product so this is the fermentation product the companies that are involved in fermentation studies fermentation product they utilize the bioprocess engineering 
and produce their uh, the the interested the, the product that they are interested in next is product separation suppose i'm talking about uh, a particular uh, incident suppose you have a uh, a sample that is comprising of a lot of things suppose a b c d e f g h you have a lot of things in a particular sample now you want to separate out the b thing the b from that particular sample you can utilize the bioprocess engineering in that thing also so we would talk about how this can be done in the upcoming or uh, upcoming uh, uh, lectures but for now you have to understand that this bioprocess engineering can be utilized in product separation fine okay next let us move on to design and instrumentation what is design and instrumentation i have already told you that we are utilizing the chemical engineering the principles for our benefit we are doing it for designing and developing new equipments or advancing the equipments that we already have and also designing new processes that how can we increase the yield increase the product of whatever we are getting fine i hope you got my point so design and instrumentation instrumentation is the next application next is controlling bio process so a biological process can all can be controlled of course you might be knowing this because uh, a lot of processes a lot of biological processes can be controlled just just giving you an example let us say that glucose is converting into glucose 6 phosphate you might have heard about that and glycolysis and in the same way uh, uh, the phosphofructokinase uh, the 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 process involving phosphofructokinase okay so these two steps and the last step that is pyruvate kinase these three steps can be regulated you might be knowing in glycolysis because these these are the unidirectional steps these can be regulated so in the same way how can you regulate other bio process steps how can you regulate the other biological processes we can do that we can do that by changing uh, the concentration of a particular nutrient you can change you can change that by uh, using different inoculum size we can do a lot of stuff with this okay so these were the few applications that i wanted to share with you next is the concept of system and surrounding okay so before going into the concept of system and surrounding let us understand what is uh, uh okay so let us uh, move on to first uh, then uh, system and surrounding that would be a better idea let us talk about a system what is a system suppose this is suppose i'm talking about this particular thing it is a system i'm calling it a system why am i calling it as a system whenever you have a particular thing you have a particular entity and you surround it with a boundary so in this case the boundary is this this is the boundary and whatever is inside the boundary whatever you are considering is called as system and whatever is outside this boundary can be called as universe so this would be called as everything else could be called as a universe and the entity that is present inside the boundary would be called as a system so do we have any such examples any such live examples yeah of course let us take an example of the fermenter you are working with a fermenter okay so whatever is present inside the fermenter fermenter you are working in uh, with the fermenter whatever is present inside the fermenter let us consider that as system and the steel wall of the fermenter is the boundary okay and whatever is outside that particular uh, boundary is called as the universe okay so this is the concept let us take an example of a test tube you are having a chemical inside a test tube so that test tube is having a glass boundary so inside the glass whatever material whatever chemical that you are having can be called as a system and outside the glass is the boundary i hope this is clear so this was about system boundary and the universe okay so uh, now let us move on to what is a closed system and what is a open system let us understand this so whenever you are able to exchange you are able to exchange matter from this universe 
to the system and vice versa what you are doing is the system is actually an open system so what am i saying is let me write it down when you are able to exchange matter or let us say mass when you are able to exchange matter or mass universe either it can be from universe to the system or system back to universe then it would be called as an open system the system would be called as an open system now if you are not able to do that if you are not able to transfer the matter or mass from the system to the surrounding or from uh, uh, from the system to the surrounding or from surrounding to the system then it would be called as a closed system otherwise closed system so this if this process is not taking place that is why i have put a cross over here if this process is not taking place it would be called as a closed system so this is what i wanted to uh, share okay now with this concept in mind let us move on to batch system semi batch system fed batch system and continuous uh, continuous system continuous system okay let us move on to first of all let us talk about batch system so batch system is a closed system whenever you are doing an experiment in such a way that you have a fermenter you have a bottle you put in your material you put in your medium you put in your inoculum and then close the lid of the of the bottle you close the lid of the fermenter or bottle bottle or whatever you are working with you close it and keep it for the desired period suppose my experiment is for one month i keep it for one month i do not touch it and when after one month i get come back and then and then whatever i want to do with the product i do that before that i do not touch that so that is what is a closed system why am i calling it as a closed system because initially before starting the experiment i dump everything inside the bottle inside the fermenter i close it and i do not open it until and unless the destined period of uh, my work is 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 completed right so that is why it is called as a batch system so batch system has its own utilities has its own advantages has its own disadvantages okay batch system is easy to put in i mean it it, it is cheap you can start it uh, with a uh, less amount of input or less amount of capital now coming to fed batch system like i will take up fed batch system first and then i will move on to semi batch system so fed batch system in fed batch system what you are allowed to do is fed means feeding so you are feeding the fermenter okay what you are doing is you are allowed to input the mass or input the nutrients input the medium inside the fermenter but you are not allowed to take out the material from the fermenter that is the restriction you are not allowed to take out the uh, out, uh, you can you are not allowed to take out the uh, media but of course you can input the material so this is called as fed batch system so understanding this why is fed batch system generally used fed batch system is utilized for the production of secondary metabolites okay in fed batch system you can produce secondary metabolites furthermore when you are adding new medium inside the uh, inside the fermenter what will happen is the volume of the fermenter will uh, the volume that would be inside the fermenter that would increase that is what i have written over here v would increase the volume would increase and also the cd cd means cell density when you are putting in more volume of medium what will happen is the cells that would be present inside would start multiplying and it would result in a higher cell density so volume has increased cell density has increased secondary metabolites would be produced in a higher concentration secondary metabolites would be produced okay so secondary metabolites are also produced can also be produced in the batch system why is that so because in the batch system a cryptic condition arises you might have seen the logarithmic graph the growth kinetics if you haven't seen that you can go on to my uh, hindi version but i would uh, eventually make uh, that particular video as well so what will happen is uh, 
let me show it to you what will happen is this let us say this is the number of cells this is the time so this would be the curve that would be followed okay so here in the in the stationary phase what would happen the secondary metabolites would be produced why would the secondary metabolites be produced produced like antibiotics would be produced in here in the stationary phase why would that be uh, so because here the cells would want that other cells should die because the nutrient conditions are depleting therefore cells would want that other cells should die that is why they would start producing toxic compounds and it would result in that it would result in the death of other cells okay that is the thing that i wanted to talk about we would discuss that eventually during the upcoming lectures okay so we have discussed batch system we have discussed fed batch system now coming to semi batch system in the semi batch system you are allow allowed either input or output but you are not allowed both you can either input the medium you can either take up take out the medium okay now coming to the continuous system okay in the continuous system what you can do is you you can uh, pour in the media and also you can take out the media so you can do both the stuff simultaneously so the rate let us understand this if the rate of uh, the putting in the media is equal to the rate at which you take out the media then this process can go on up till infinity because there is nothing stopping that process right you are putting in the media you are taking out the media so the if the rate of both of these processes is equal then uh, this process can run up to infinity that is what i have written over here only if rate of input is equal to rate of output this is not that simple we would talk about that uh, particular this particular topic in much more detail in the upcoming lectures okay so uh, this was more or less about the uh, another example that i would like to give you suppose i'm talking about a micro what what is actually the bio process engineering suppose i'm utilizing uh, there is a lot of stuff or uh, there is a lot of uh, examples in the microbial world which are being used for the production of different uh, products that are useful to mankind okay S uh, such as lactic acid can be produced by lactobacillus citric acid can be produced by aspergillus okay uh, then uh, the nitrogen metabolism things can be produced by rhizobium okay so these are some of the examples that bioprocess engineering with the help of bioprocess engineering you can utilize these microbes for the production of your desired products right so this is a great example of how you can utilize bioprocess engineering for your purpose okay so this was all from my side uh, in the bioprocess engineering lecture 1 in english we would be uh, coming up with more such lectures in english in future if you have liked this lecture please hit the like button subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon and i would also request you to please circulate these videos amongst your friends as well thank you so much have a great day